Wonderful. And now, if you will join me in singing our welcome song. If you will stand and um, I, think, I think the words are on the, the screen. Or will be shortly. <laughs>
You have, you have so much courage. Thank you. Well, somebody got to, somebody's got to stand up for stuff. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. And they do it. And they do it.
August. Till the end of August. Fantastic. We will have a meditation with Rebecca Flores. This will be Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Please just show up and get your meditation on. <laughs> be fantastic. Wonderful. Sunday, July the 23rd, following our service, we will have our congregational meeting. So please join us. Everyone is welcome, and it's very informative, and we want to hear your voice, your ideas. Our Sunday services are being live-streamed. If you would like to contribute in supporting our ministry, please go to our website, www.unitychurchbillings.org, and click on the button, Donate. And we greatly appreciate all of your contributions and your ties. Our prayer chaplain, Charlene Inglis, is in the house. And she is an amazing prayer chaplain. She's wonderful. She is available to pray with you after the service. So just let her know. And if you don't know who she is, then just ask any one of us, and we'll let you know. She's a beautiful, wonderful person, heart and soul of our church. Will you please join me in standing and singing when I pray, again with Russ White. Thank you, Russ. It's another nice song by Daniel Newman. When I pray, I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God. When I pray, I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God. Right here. I pray, I 
Feel my love go deeper, my love go deeper into my God. Right here, right now, right where I am, I pray. Right here, right now, right where I am, I pray. When I pray, I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God. So nice to have you. And now, I will read to you from the Daily Word, Sunday, July 2nd, 2017. I give and receive light and love. I am grateful for my spiritual support system, the people and practices that have reinforced my spiritual understanding. Prayer is an integral part of that system. I take time each day to quiet my thoughts, speak prayerful words, or simply be. I am part of something greater than myself. Keeping this truth in my heart prepares me for seeing any challenge in life. Knowing that God and I are one gives me strength. I build upon my support system by reaching out to people, forming friendships, joining prayer partners, and attending church services. In this way, I bolster my sense of belonging. I find inspiration to live my purpose. I also become a part of the support system of others. I give and receive light and love. While you have the light, believe in the light so that you may become children of light. John 12, 36. And now we join me in praying the Unity Foundation Principle. There is only, only one, one presence and one, one power in the universe, universe and, and in my life. God the good, omnipotent. And the Unity of Billings Affirmation. Please join me. Through divine wisdom and grace, unity of Billings is vibrant, healing, and inclusive. And now if you'll take a moment to hold your offerings in your hand and your prayers, the ushers will come and we will have special music. If you'll please hold silence. Can we say our affirmations? Yeah. Yes, don't say that affirmation. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful.
This land is your land, this land is my land, from California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. Living in 
in it. Isn't that odd? Like, can you imagine a neighborhood that you just couldn't stand? Whatever that is to you, okay? Something that you just are like, I can't take it. This is terrible. I'm going to move in. <laughs> I'm moving everybody I love there. I'm moving every single thing I own there. I'm going to make sure that I am there full time. But man, I can't stand this neighborhood. That's what happens when we live in fear. Did you know that the Bible has the phrase, fear not or be not afraid, roughly 110 times in it? 110 times. Now, generally, the fear not, be not afraid, was coming from an angel or was coming from Mother, Father, God, and was coming from Jesus. Fear not. And if you think about this, most of the time, Mother, Father, God, who walks around inside of all of us, as the song said this morning, is saying from within, it's okay, chill out, chill out, it's okay. But back in the day, in our beautiful Old English that our Bible was translated into, fear not. <laughs> Why do you suppose we're always being told not to fear? Because we do it all the time. Because we tend to move in there. That's the neighborhood we choose. Why do we do that? Why do we choose fear? If Mother, Father, God lives within us, why do we choose fear? Why? Well, there's two reasons. There is such thing as biological fear. Now, I know this is going to shock many of you, but we're mammals, okay? We are mammals. And as mammals... We have a biological instinct to stay alive. Ergo, don't pet a bear. Don't fall in the fire. Stay out of that tornado. That's called <laughs> biological fear. That propagates the species. That is in the reptilian brain at the very base of the spinal column. And that tells you, don't run in front of a train. That's a bad idea. That's biological fear. That's a stay on this planet. Okay? But that's not actually, not really, where we as 21st century Americans overall are living our daily lives. Now there are some people who do live their daily lives in a place of victimization where that biological fear is a real thing for them every day. So as you go about your week, if you are not one of those people, I would love it for you to spend 30 seconds of your day to just pause whatever you're doing, you're at a stoplight, you're waiting for your change at Starbucks, whatever. Take that time to say, Mother, Father, God, connect with blessings and love for all of those people who actually live in biological fear around the planet. Please. Because what a blessing that I don't. I mean, that literally almost just makes me break into tears up here. Because I can feel as an empathic individual those people who do live in that fear of death. Most of us, in this nation anyway, are not in that situation. Most of us are not. The greater fear designs our neighborhoods that we move into, neighborhoods of the spirit. The fear of the mind. The fear of the mind. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Because the fear of the mind is the greatest imprisonment ever. You know, there was an M. Night Shyamalan movie, and of course, now that I need the title, it's out the window, because that's the way it rolls. However, the M. Night Shyamalan movie, and it starred Will Smith and his son, and he dealt with aliens that could find human beings because they could smell our fear, and they would go kill us. Yet, Will Smith played a character that eradicated all fear from him. Oh, I get goosebumps when I talk about this movie. I love it. And he could literally walk among all of those aliens, and they couldn't even see him because he did not give off fear. He was not afraid. And, of course, you know, he's Will Smith, so he's walking around being very calm. Pow, pow, pow. And, of course, the aliens are awful, and they're eating humanity because we as humans have to polarize everything and make us the heroes. That's kind of how we roll. However... In this movie, it's a great, amazing analogy for choosing fear versus not choosing fear. You know that old saying your grandma used to say to you? You better care for what you think of because it will come and meet you at your front door. Watch where your thoughts are because it will show right up on your doorstep. 
Well, we now know that there is science behind that. It's called manifestation. We now know that our brain is an electromagnetic transmitter like a radio antenna. This is science, guys. This isn't spirituality, although I believe spirituality and science are the same thing. This isn't woo-woo, although I do believe that science, woo-woo, and spirituality are the same thing. <laughs> this is real facts. Go to pubmed.gov. That's a medical website where every single article is vetted through the medical community. You can read about how the brain is an electromagnetic transmitter and receiver. So if I'm transmitting fear, fear, freak out, freak out, freak out, that is on, we're going to call that a bandwidth. That's like 97.6 right there, okay? And, and if you tune in your radio dial and you hit 97.6, what are you going to receive? Well, whatever's broadcasting on that station. So if our brain is going, fear channel, fear channel, fear channel, I have just said, bring me your fear. You know, bring me your tired, bring me your hopeless. Bring me your worst case scenario. Bring me your biggest freak out. And that's what we attract to us. Because everything in this incarnation, and this is our Einstein moment of the presentation, everything in this incarnation is an electromagnetic vibration. True. We have two types of particle matter, light and solids. A little physics, but true stuff. So in this incarnation, if we're throwing out the fear frequency, it's a physical issue, guys, not an attitude thing, not some Mary Poppins ideology, although I love her, Mary Poppins. <laughs> what this is about, truly, is what we put out there we bring to us. So why is fear such a magnificent teacher, then? Because we spend a lot of time with fear. Because we have created these prisons of the mind, because we have been shaped and forged to expect the worst. Expect the worst. You better save for that 401k, because if you don't, a planet is going to be struck by a comet, and the banks will go away, and I don't know how you'll even spend your money, but you'll need that for something. I mean, we get catastrophized like crazy by a, a nation that is driven by consumerism. We must sell you lack so that you buy more things. But why do you think that works, you guys? It's because we can live in fear anyway. Listen, I'm, I'm, I can't throw a rock at consumerism, obviously, okay? <laughs> Yet what I'm saying here is that we have been formulated to expect the worst because our biological fear has asked us to stay alive. Now, I want you to think about this a minute. So I'm hunter-gatherer cave person, and I know winter is coming. I fear death, so I get out there and I save up food, okay? Now we're going to take that to the point where most of us aren't fearing death in the winter. Not everybody has homes. We have a homeless problem here in buildings. We have a homeless problem in, in the United States. Yet many people have homes, so we're not thinking we're going to freeze to death. So our fear is other things. What if she doesn't like me? What if I don't get that raise? What if he called me fat secretly when he said, that's a nice shirt, where did you get it? I mean, fear, fear, fear. We get this fear thing going up here. Because we are so hyper-vigilant from being culturally taught that we need to expect the worst of everything. Because we have separated ourselves mentally from Mother, Father, God. We have separated ourselves mentally. Why do I say mentally? Because there is no separation from Mother, Father, God. Mother, Father, God is within. Mother, Father, God rules through your cells. Mother, Father, God completely encapsulates everything you are, every breath, every thought. You are co-creating this reality moment by moment with God. That is not blasphemy. That is the truth. God is within. God is you. You are God. So think about this. Why don't we want to own that? Because we've been taught that that's wrong. We've been taught, no, I'm, I'm, God is out here. I am a lonely person here. Well, that, that doesn't make very much sense, you know? And, and how does that work? How does that work that Mother, Father, God can be inside of us and that we can be part of God? How does it work? Because isn't God the greatest consciousness of all time, we say? Isn't God the collective? Isn't God something so much bigger than I could even get my brain around? 
Well, maybe. But we're all part of that anyway. So maybe we're part of what we're trying to get our brain around. Maybe that's part of this. Now, you think about who has children? Who has children here? Okay, lots of folks have children. You have a child, and that child then goes on, and you know that child is separate than you are. But how many of you who have kids can feel your kids all the time? Yeah, hello, right? You can feel them all the time. You know when they've been great. You know they've not been good. You know. You can feel it in there. So it's a separate person. This is an analogy for us being part of the body of God. It's a separate person, but you guys are deeply connected. And you'll always be connected. Thus it is. It even goes beyond that with embodying the spirit of Mother, Father, God. Why do I go on and on and on and on and on about this? Because fear as a teacher, if God created all things then becomes a tool, not an adversary. Right? Mother, Father, God made everything. In its infinite wisdom, Mother, Father, God made everything. Mother, Father, God made love. Mother, Father, God made waste, darkness, light, fear. So, we're going to take the Will Smith approach here. We're going to take the Will Smith approach. What if fear itself was not to be feared. You know the old saying, the old quote, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Which is actually, outside of biological fear or a bear, a true thing. So what if we took, what if we took the Will Smith approach and said, fear, I know you're going to be there. I have been enculturated to adopt you as an operating system. I've been told that I can't get along without you. I've been told if I don't fear, I'm not being prudent. If I'm not fearful, I'm not being watchful. Don't you love the way we incorporate watchful and vigilant with being completely paranoid? What is that? Who made that equivocation? That's just odd. you think everyone was an Italian. <laughs> so I really, I mean, you have this whole swath of teaching. Being afraid is being smart. Being wary and untrustful is being vigilant. No, it's not. It's being wary and untrustful, and it's being paranoid, and it's being afraid. So own it. Say, I'm really being paranoid right now. I'm really being afraid right now. Man, I don't trust you because you know what? When I don't trust somebody else, guess what that means? It means somewhere in me, I don't trust me. That's a true story. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, in the Bible it says, don't throw your pearls before swine. It doesn't mean don't be a non-discerning person. And obviously, if you know somebody's a piece of work, put them in the piece of work category and take them for where they're at and don't expect them not to be a piece of work, okay? Yet, if I don't trust you, that means I don't trust me. So where does fear become my teacher? Well, the minute I come out of being afraid of feeling fearful, this gets weird, this gets like that movie insidious, but stay with me, so if, if you come out of being afraid of being fearful, what happens? We no longer have an emotional reaction to the situation before us. The minute you take an emotional reaction out of being fearful, you can use that for all kinds of stuff. There's lots of data there. Ooh, that gay person scares me. Ooh, they scare me. They, they, they intimidate my way of life. They, 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 they tear down on my idea of God. Well, why? Why does that scare you? Let's look at it. Where is your idea of God? Where is your idea of family? How fragile is it? Let's look at these things. Because if I can go, wait a second, why am I afraid of that person tearing down my idea of family? My family's pretty strong. Okay. And why am I afraid of that person tearing down my idea of God? Maybe I'm not really sure what my idea of God is. I mean, I know it's in the Bible, but I never read that thing. So what is it? I run a lot uh, into that a lot as a pastor, actually. A lot. Where people say, have you actually read the whole Bible? And I'll say, yeah, but I, I don't remember a lot of it. <laughs> so, that's the truth. 
There's a lot of lineage in there. There's a, somebody begot, somebody begot, somebody begot, somebody, and I, I bless it all, but I'm like, wow. This is like reading Ancestry.com with a lot of syllables. Okay? So if we can take that step away from having fear create an emotional reaction in us, then we can use it as a teacher. It's trying to tell us, we got some stuff in here where Mother, Father, God is sitting within us that might not even be in the same i am got to be careful how I say this because all things are created by God. All things are God. Yet just for the simplicity's sake, fear does sit in a different vibration than love, period. It sits in a different vibration. So, so if I am afraid, that's Mother Father God's way of going, ah, uh, you need to clean out cabinet number seven. You got some rotting rice in there and a bunch of mice coming in here. Can you kind of deal with that, please? It's true. That's what Mother Father God's trying to do. Fear is a teacher. It says there's something out of place here that you can fix if you look at it. See, and then we're told and taught that we're lesser than. We're taught that we're, we're terrible people. So when we find something in us that may need adjusted, then we beat ourselves up. Oh, how could I be so weak? How could I be so fearful? How could I be this person? Woe is me. No, okay, we, we can skip that part. That's very Telemundo. We can skip that part. <laughs> so... Why don't we just sit with it as a teacher? What is my fear bringing towards me? That my mother, father, God's face is going, you know, this might not be in your best interest. Eeks. Because I'm mother, father, God in you, and I love you. You're my favorite. I have seven billion favorites. Hey. I want you to feel so good. And there's this thing in there, and it's it's catching in your grid work, see? And it's tearing your drapes up, and just get it out of there. You're not going to hear that? Okay. Hey, you're afraid of gay people. Does that work? All right. Because we tend to pay attention to what changes our decisions. Think about that. We pay attention to what changes our decisions. How many decisions, now be honest, and there's no shame in this, humans, because we are human. How many decisions have you made because you were afraid if you didn't, blah, 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 would happen? Yeah. Tons of those. Tons of those. I have to do this because if I don't, blah. Or I feel really, really desperate, so I'll just do this because I'm afraid. I will tell you any decision made in great fear, unless it's that like high Solar plexus chakra fear that you get when, when you're nervous to do something new, that's a different thing, but that's a different topic. When you feel that fear down low and you do it anyway because you're afraid, how, how often does that work out for you? <laughs> how about never? Because when we take actions in fear, that's also a teacher. So, okay, you felt desperate, you knee-jerked, you freaked out, you went and did this thing, and it fell flat. That's what happens when we choose to walk in the resonation of the mind, which we're totally allowed to, this is free will, planet, all earth, as opposed to walking in the spirit of Mother, Father, God. Now, if it were easy, we'd all be doing this 24 and 7, right? We'd all be walking around going, I'm not afraid of anything. It doesn't matter. I'm good. But it does matter. It matters a lot. You know, it matters that we have this exercise of choosing to turn fear into our teacher. We choose to turn fear into our teacher, and then Mother, Father, God goes, See, you broke out of the matrix. You're on level nine now. Way to go. woo 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 because as we choose to use him as our teacher, doesn't mean we can't have our emotional responses, doesn't mean we won't cry, doesn't mean we won't be afraid. But when we choose that game, that's called ascension. Because we overcome the knee-jerk reaction to harm someone because we're afraid, to drop the ball because we're afraid, to not connect with Mother, Father, God because we're afraid. Fear's rough. And let's, let's face it, gang, most of us, because we're not in biological fear, let's be honest, we can be frightened very easily. Our creature comforts barely get threatened. And we freak out in America. We freak right out. Barely 
threatened. Okay? I, I mean, I've had clients come to me, because obviously I, I'm a spiritual advisor in the rest of my work. I mean, I've had clients come to me who have $10,000 in the bank, who, have, who own three homes, who are doing well. And one tiny thing will shift in their revenue stream, maybe by $200 a month. And, and they're just in tears, in limitation consciousness, just sobbing. I'm going to go broke. Everything's ruined. It's all gone. But that's the fear of the mind. None of that's real. You look on paper, they're fine. They got money to pay those bills. They got houses to live in. But the idea of the threat is here. What is that? What is that fear? It's called limitation. And why do we take on limitation? Because biologically, we used to have to hunt or gather. And so it is genetically within us to want to make sure we have enough. That's a true thing. However, gang, come on. Most of us, most of us are privileged and blessed. Even though we're living paycheck to paycheck, how many folks live paycheck to paycheck, right? Okay, I know, I do. How many folks, how many folks, each month, even though things might get a little tight, actually end up on the street? How many of you who live paycheck to paycheck actually starve during the month? How many of you have actually lost all of your utilities and all of your clothes just disappeared out of your closet. <laughs> so you see where you see where we go a little sideways with this idea of fear? Why don't we let that be our teacher? It's not to say, guys, we don't have our stress. Obviously, we're going to have stress. Yeah, how about this? How about using it as our teacher? Wow, I'm paycheck to paycheck. I'm down to my last 100 bucks, 50 bucks, 25 bucks, $19 before my next paycheck. $6. I'm up 45 cents in that checking account. I haven't bounced anything. Rock on! Yes! <laughs> Been there! When that happens, use the fear that <coughs> it's going to be gone. Use your fear as a teacher. Let's take the words gonna be out of it. And you live right in that moment. And you tell Mother, Father, God, thank you. I have enough. Thank you. I am covered. Thank you for co-creating miracles with me right now. My lights are on. Thank you. We are still here. Thank you. Not what do I don't have, but thank you for what I do have. Let's use that fear of lack as an opportunity to turn around and say, wow, I'm still standing. I'm still protected. I'm still alive. Gang, I got news for you. Mother, Father, God wants to shock you with miracles that will blow your mind. It's true. Mother, Father, God wants to shock you with miracles. We can't let those miracles in if we don't give them a place to be. If fear is taking up all of our miracle space, then those miracles, like a helicopter, can't land. So let's use fear as our teacher to show us spots inside of ourselves that we could probably just do a little bit of work on to make our day-to-day -day life more comfortable. And recognize that fear is designed to be a teacher for humanity. Jesus Christ came down here. Jesus came down in this divine being in a physical body. Mark 26, uh, excuse me, Matthew 26, tells us that Jesus was afraid and went to the Garden of Gethsemane and basically cried and prayed and freaked out right before he was to be crucified. He was afraid. Because he knew that wasn't going to be any fun. He knew being strung up and hung up was going to be heinous. And he could have hit the road, but he didn't. Yet he sat with his fear. He sat with his fear. He put his arms around his fear. He didn't cast his fear out as a weakness. He went and sat in Gethsemane and embraced that fear and said, Father, do I have to do this they're so mean down here. <laughs> They're going to pin me to a tree. Do I have to make this point like this? I'm afraid. It's going to hurt. I don't want to. And Jesus did not push away that emotion. Jesus, the human embodied divinity, embraced it. And let it be his teacher. And what did Jesus learn from that moment? That Jesus could overcome his own fear. Jesus, as a human, 
had that lesson just like every single one of us. Because when you come down here and you zip up one of these things, guess what? I don't care if you're coming from where we're all bits of divinity from God. You can be Jesus the Christ, embodied as God. But we all get the same rules. I don't care who you are. The rules are the same for all of us in this thing. You, me, Jesus, Gandhi, Buddhist, all of them. So we're going to do a quick meditation here. And we are going to allow fear to go out into the world. So those of you joining online, just go ahead and get yourself comfortable. Everybody here, just get yourself comfortable. Sit with your feet on the floor, hands comfortably in your lap. Take a deep breath through your nose and out through your mouth. And envision in front of you our gorgeous planet of Earth. Earth floating in space. Quiet, peaceful. And look closely at the lower atmospheres of the planet, just like you were a satellite view from NASA, where you see the horizon just bend over. And you see this dim gray haze all around the planet. And that is the pollution that is put into the air emotionally from fear. And that hangs over the earth because we as humans don't even realize the amount of fear that we put into the ethers because it is so ingrained into us to be fearful rather than to embrace the love and the miracle potential of Mother, Father, God. So as we float right above the earth, we're watching satellites pass maybe 20, 30 feet right below us. I want you to look around and you see another person floating off to your right and another person floating off to your left. And pretty soon, the entire space above the earth is people. Some of them you've never met, but they're all smiling. And there's this person next to you and you just reach and grab their hand. You don't even need to know them, it doesn't matter. Because everybody here is here to help with this haze of fear. And soon there are billions of us holding hands. You've got friendly people holding a toe. You're just holding a grid around the earth. And at one time, you open up your heart chakra, the space in the chest. And you allow that open up. And this beautiful pink beam floods downward onto that haze. And as it floods onto that haze, billions of pink gold rays just begin to evaporate. That grayish <coughs> haze in the upper atmosphere of the Earth. You can see big holes starting to develop in it, and pretty soon those holes become huge. And instead, what is melting that grayish dark haze is this beautiful pink golden yellow wrap as it's eating around the earth it surrounds the poles it surrounds the center of the world soon the earth has burned away this black dark gray haze and instead sits in this gorgeous pink gold glow that is the love of mother father god that is the true, clear spirit of humanity. And you hear the fighting on the earth, quiet. You fear, you feel the fear dissipate. And the earth rests. And Mother Gaia says, thank you. For that has been an itch that I was unable to scratch. For it is not my itch. So then you just go ahead and let go of those hands. And you see that earth wrapped in this pink, beautiful gold light. And we have dissolved all the fear. The resonation of the earth is lifted. You feel yourself float back down into your physical body. You feel the cool air in this sanctuary. 
You hear the breathing of other people, and you realize, I am not alone. I am the body of God. I am peace. I thank fear as my teacher, for it is one tool given to me by the divinity of the knowingness of God. It is not my master, it is my teacher. So as you feel yourself, come back into your body and open your eyes. May you understand the incredible collective power that we have. We are the love of God. We are the connected, beautiful, healing miracle that this planet has waited for. So do you remember that when you go into this weekend? Remember, 30 seconds at the stoplight, 30 seconds at the Starbucks line. I hold the person who struggles with biological fear daily in compassion and in love. And you send them that same light out of your heart chakra. And you make room for the miracles Mother, Father, God is attempting to give you. This is our birthright humanity. Blessings. <laughs>